Hello, everyone. Welcome to the e-panel discussion on ministry experiences with agricultural scans. I'd just like to present uh, the facilitation team to you. Uh, Riff Fullen, uh, I will be moderating the chat today. Uh, and as I say, I'll start with a, an introduction of the facilitation team. So uh, aside from myself, I'm uh, leading the knowledge component of the Aventi initiative, and I'll explain a bit more about Aventi in a couple of minutes. Uh, the technical coordinator for this event uh, and uh, knowledge component advisor for Aventi is Cesar Robles. And we also have a moderator of the chat uh, function. And again, I'll talk a bit about the chat in a minute. That's Eugenia Stefanelli, who's the liaison officer for Avanti. And finally, uh, the social reporting coordinator is Emmeline Henderson, who is a communications advisor for Avanti. And uh, just to let you know, uh, we are recording the event, uh, not the chat uh, window entries, but the event itself, the audio and whatever video and the slides. For those who are not familiar with Avanti, uh, it is an EFAD funded initiative that is aimed at uh, strengthening government's capacities around monitoring, evaluation and learning and reporting against the sustainable development goals, uh, all of which is in support of a results-based management approach. Um, if I could put that more concisely, I would say uh, it's about contributing to better government decision-making around policies and strategies in the rural sector. And we won't be talking about the, the entire breadth of the Avanti initiative today, but we'll focus instead on uh, the most central feature, which is the facilitation of self-assessments by uh, ministries working in the agricultural rural sector uh, around their capacities for monitoring, evaluation, and reporting. Um, and that's why uh, it's the, the, those particular self-assessment exercises are called agricultural scans or ag scans as we call them uh, in shorthand. So what we will do today is to uh, get uh, some uh, reactions, comments, uh, reflections from a variety of, of actors in this context. Uh, first, I'll be talking to a couple of uh, implementers, facilitators of these AgScan exercises to get their perspective on the AgScans they've been involved with so far. Uh, then uh, I will turn it over to part some of the ministries in, in a few of the countries where AgScans have been conducted to, to get a bit of a sense of their perspective on the process. And finally, uh, a reaction from a representative of Avanti's advisory board uh, of, you know, with a bit of the broader picture uh, perspective there. And in between those times, we will uh, look at uh, the questions and comments that people have uh, submitted as we go along to try to also uh, respond to some of those. So uh, the other thing I want to just show you is um, the, the Ag scan process is uh, uh, relatively short term in terms of, of development interventions, if you could put it that way. But just to give you a sense of what happens, uh, there's discussions uh, within IFAD and, and uh, Helvetas and ITAD. Helvetas and ITAD are the two implementing organizations of the Avanti initiative around you know, where there might be uh, interest uh, uh, and opportunity to conduct an ag scan. Uh, we put a team together to, to uh, start to explore this. Uh, we connect with uh, people on the, on the government side where we do think there might be interest and have some discussions with them. And when we can confirm confirm that there is interest, we then go about customizing the, the tools that we use to do the self-assessment and uh, action planning that happens as a result of the self-assessment. So most of our energy will be around this uh, box that's in a, a dotted, dotted line kind of box that you see in steps four and five, the self-assessment process itself, and then the initial prioritization of actions, which leads to the action plan in step six on your slide. And of course, we want to look at uh, what comes out of those action plans, how they how they evolve and things like that. Although Avanti is a relatively young initiative, we uh, officially launched it a, about a year ago. So there's, uh, we're still in relatively early stages, but we'll we'll talk through some of the, uh, the results that we have so far. So let's move on to our first couple of panelists. Uh, I'd like to welcome Kai Schrader, who's the uh, team leader for the Avanti initiative, and he's also been an AgScan facilitator in Bolivia, Peru, and Tunisia. So welcome, Kai. 
I will uh, also welcome uh, Patrick Spavin, who's a team leader for two ag scans, one in Rwanda and one in Sierra Leone. Welcome, Patrick. So uh, let me just uh, start with you, Patrick. Um, you played a lead role in these ag scans, as I mentioned, in Sierra Leone and, and also in Rwanda. Uh, what stands out in your mind as a result of those experiences? Does, were any aspects surprising to you or, or what, uh, yeah, what really bubbles up into your mind when you reflect on them? Well, let me start with the easier part of that question. What is what surprised me? Um, there were there were difficulties, um, and that's why uh, why I was surprised by the degree of energy and commitment in the workshop itself. Uh, far exceeded my expectations. Um, Dynamics were different in the two countries. Um, for example, in one of them, the, the people simply wouldn't go away. They wanted to stick at it uh, in the action planning. We had to skip lunch as a result, which really annoyed me, <laughs> but it was a fantastic uh, experience. And in another country, in the other country, um, at times the, the noise in the room was deafening. People were arguing about, about the um, assessments that they were making. So a fantastic experience in many ways. Um, I see that Craig is, uh, is online. I hope he uh, recognizes that uh, description of one of the um, one of the accents we did. Um, and linked to that, I think we, I was also slightly surprised, uh, but pleasantly surprised by the fact that in the feedback we got from the, uh, in the immediate reaction questionnaire, uh, people were saying what a, um, a, a capability um, development experience uh, it was. They had uh, learned a lot, uh, and in particular about how wide a scope um, RBM can cover. Many of these people were M&E people who were sort of fairly narrowly sp focused on, on data collection and reporting, and they were talking about having their eyes opened. So I think that was, in a sense, a, an unforeseen benefit. But of course, uh, that's not, uh, you know, that isn't the main purpose. And the main purpose was to get uh, ownership from the government of, of the process, uh, both the um, build up to the workshop, the defining of the scope of the workshop, uh, and then of course of the uh, action planning following. Um, and that was more difficult. And we had to spend, in both cases, a long time uh, convincing the players that uh, there was benefit for them in this, getting the timing right, uh, getting the participants right, um, and then working out a process to take things forward after the workshop. So the, the ownership issue requires a lot of work on the ground. Um, and one last thing I'll mention is, the, is, the, is a, still, I think, a work in progress, and that's uh, about how you uh, define results in the context of uh, the SDGs. The SDGs uh, mostly cut across sectors, and um, it's quite difficult for countries that have been used to monitoring evaluation in a particular ministry, in a particular sector, to, to then work out uh, the, um, uh, how they uh, needed to um, expand the scope of their monitoring evaluation to report on the SDGs. And in those two countries, uh, they had both experienced uh, voluntary national review. So they, this wasn't new to them, um, but both were struggling still, and I think probably this is case right across the globe, people struggling to adapt existing sort of legacy monitoring evaluation systems for monitoring evaluation of uh, the SDGs and of course learning from that as well. So that was that was tricky. We, we made some progress, but I think it's still work in progress. The whole uh, issue of localization of the SDGs is one that is uh, permeating many of the dialogues that are happening these days. It's uh, it's not a trivial exercise to uh, to see how some of these uh, very cutting uh, um, uh, issues that are involved with SDG pursuit and, and, and achievement are actually how do you translate them into contexts where often the the operational side of things and even the the, the ways of thinking are are a little bit more uh, uh, silo like you know they're not they're not built to be these kind of cross cutting ways of doing things and certainly right. when it comes to monitoring and, and reporting it's also not a, a trivial exercise to do that in a coherent way but let me uh, just bounce over to yes uh, my name is Kai Schreiner I had the pleasure to have 
um, uh, lead three ARC scans in three countries. I did the first one in Peru, then we did uh, early this year Tunisia, and uh, just very recently Bolivia. And the experiences of all the three countries are very different. But I need to, I, I mean, I, I'm, I have the same experience with Patrick. I want to share this, the energy when we finally came to the stage to implement that workshop uh, was the same in all three uh, moments in all three countries. So so what was very different was the way how we get into uh, to convince uh, the, the ministries to find our uh, partners to get the interested people uh, at the beginning and um, as you do not know much maybe on the on the axcam process it's all about at the beginning to have an analysis of stakeholders who should be invited who can we invite who has to has to be in the workshop who has to have a say and so forth and then the negotiation with the government that can take a, a couple of months um, half a year until we find the right moment where government says yeah let's do it there this is where it fits into our agenda that is where we can get the people um, uh, to, to join a workshop and we we start I mean for us the, the best thing would be to have a three days workshop two days for analysis and one day for planning but uh, as we as we target very high level persons that had a, a lot of uh, tasks on their plate and uh, it is difficult to get them off their office uh, for such a long time we always need to have a, an alternative or um, uh, we, we, we cannot count on on everybody for all, the whole three days so we need to find com we need to do compromise but once we are in this workshop in this moment to share in this facilitation we uh, we involve uh, the ministries and also facilitating of group works so make the people talk uh, then you really realize this energy the the the, the discussions between the colleagues uh, between departments that usually do not exchange May, maybe even uh, in the work group you have uh, other donors you have uh, other stakeholders institutions you have other ministries or representatives from ministries so the, the discussions were very very lively and on all three uh, occasions uh, there was the um, at the end the, uh, the evaluation that wow we should have had more time to get deeper into the discussions. And uh, I must say that the, this uh, moment of the, the participatory moment to be able to talk to the, your colleagues and to break up the silos was for many persons a, a very nice um, experience. And they really, uh, we saw that in the evaluations, they really pointed at that, that it is great to have this, um, yeah, uh, this involvement of all different um, levels in the hierarchy and different departments. On that note, Patrick, maybe I could come back to you. Uh, I mean, this is one of the things we've talked about in the implementation team is, uh, is this action planning that comes out of the self-assessment exercise. And we know that there's real challenge there about uh, how do we have conditions to, uh, to follow up on these action plans, to refine them, is they're really uh, quite uh, skeletal at the beginning because they're they're really just quick exercises in the moment of of the initial results of the self assessment. Yes, I think I mean it is theoretically possible, um, and of course we try really hard in the preparation for the the ag scan uh, to create a, a momentum um, which involves, of course, the ownership that I was talking about earlier, um, and a momentum that you know will continue uh, and, and carry forward the uh, action planning that takes place in the context of the workshop through into the institutions that need to um, uh, to consider those proposals for, for improvement and to take them forward. Um, but uh, it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on the ownership. It depends on funding because a lot of the improvements will need funding, not all of them. Some can be done as, through simple adjustments in the, well, not necessarily simple, but adjustments within organizations. But but sometimes you, you are talking about investment in new uh, pr new ways of, of working and uh, in, in surveys and things like that. So, um, so it's important that uh, there is in place 
before the workshop even starts, a coalition of some kind involving key government people, uh, people from obviously the rural sector ministries, but usually involved uh, as well are the, the planet of central ministry like planning. Planning is usually the, the key to that. Um, but also the donors where possible or, or funders or not necessarily um, uh, with uh, huge grants, but possibly technical assistance and that kind of thing. So you need that. You need the capability, capacity to, to take these forward uh, by the, the owners of the action plans and, and and that is sometimes not there in full and the timing needs to be right so there are a lot of factors that need to be really in play and um even if they're all there you may still need some form of nudging facilitation uh which which i hope that avanti perhaps can you know with a with a some uh, some revision in its uh, in its its methodologies uh, be able to do but of course you know there are other players who who can in fact possibly take over the baton, so EFAD itself or, or an enthusiastic uh, local stakeholder. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a big ask. Just a very quick, uh, if I can get a very quick response from you, Kai, you talked, uh, both, well, in fact, both of you talked about this participation element and the enthusiasm around that and the, uh, you know, the connecting between departments and ministries. Is this something that uh, Avanti had anticipated from the very beginning or, or is it you know, did, it, did it come up as an artifact or was it already part of the plan? Well, I, I mean, we knew that we do not get into a void. So, so we, we knew there are a lot of initiatives around. Ministries are, are pressured by, uh, by a lot of different uh, institutions in order, for instance, to report on, <clears throat> on the SDGs. And, and, um, and many ministries in the agricultural sectors, they really struggle with the quantity of indicators, how to do this, what are the methods and so forth. So bringing the people together, I think this was for in the three cases where uh, I was facilitating, uh, this was really very much appreciated and, and people said, wow, this is really a kickoff in order to, to be able to share more our experiences within different departments, different uh, ministries and with other stakeholders. And, and the way of how to do this, you know, how can we bring a, a discussion forward uh, in between uh, um, um, people that are working on the, on the same topic, this was really much uh, appreciated so this participatory process where people can say their thing and we do not we break not only between department but also with, within hierarchies we have more the technical stuff and we have more the policy makers and and they talk together and they exchange and they can um, uh, have their say and I had a, a participant that said uh, I mean for me this was a therapy because I was really now able to sh share my concerns about about statistics, for instance, you know, what what do we do right? Where do we have to improve and to bring this to my colleagues? And she was really very much enthusiastic. And I was um, I was surprised on uh, how well it was taken up this uh, the, the part of this uh, met uh, participatory methodology. To bring in a question from uh, one of the participants, uh, Remotely, uh, we have a participant from Ivory Coast that uh, uh, is interested in this approach and is wondering if an AgScan self-assessment exercise could be implemented in his own country. Uh, what would you suggest in that regard, Kai? Yes, I mean, the, the Avanti is built uh, upon uh, the possibility to to request uh, uh, the implementation of the process in the country. So for us, a criteria for selection of the grantees countries is the interest so if there is any interest then any country can can uh, pronounce and can say yes we would like to get, get into this process and uh, we then we have on one hand we have a robust methodology so that is the same in all countries but we then very specifically um, uh, customize this methodology to the country context so it is a methodology that is uh, useful for for all countries and also uh, we try to have uh, different type of countries in where we already implement 
implemented. So we have experiences uh, for the time being uh, with nine countries uh, in, in Latin America, in Africa, and in Asia, and uh, even Oceania and Samoa. So we, we, we have a, a good uh, variety of um, big and small countries. And and uh, we, we feel that the methodology, methodology works everywhere. Let me just go to one additional question that we have from uh, Elena Pleichman, uh, Peachman, I should say. Um, could you give some examples of the actions for the action plans identified during the workshops? I mean, not necessarily a specific country, but just um, maybe, Patrick, do you have any uh, specific uh, actions? I, I know that we're in many cases early on in the process. Uh, well, yes, there were quite a number of specific actions. I think, uh, if I remember rightly, in uh, one of the countries, we were talking about 25 separate uh, action proposals, and each proposal had, uh, you know, what, what was necessary to improve, uh, who might take that forward, where the funding might come from, where the, where the, uh, what partners might need to be involved. And so on. So these are quite specific. Uh, uh, to pick out one from many, I don't have them at my fingertips, but certainly I could say that some predictably were about new sources of data. Uh, others, uh, though, were about organisation, and and particularly I think about you know people were were, were really grasping the nettle of, of this question of coming out of silos. So people were saying we really need to um, develop a process. Of coordination with uh, what other agencies? Uh, a colleague of mine, Antonia Duz, has uh, also a question about implementation of them. Okay, for for instance, from from the three countries I was in, uh, Bolivia was too recent to to tell already what what uh, the action plan will look like. In Tunisia, we had a group that elaborated, so we are on the phase in in um, uh, in in finalizing and publishing it. And uh, in Peru, uh, we have a most experience, but there I do not want to. There will be two colleagues from Peru that will tell us more about uh, concrete actions and how they took the action plan forward. Armand Zoa is with us. He's the government coordinating person for the AgScan in Cameroon and also assistant chief of staff and the head of the follow-up unit in the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Cameroon. Christian Garay Torres, the director of the Policy Monitoring and Evaluation Directorate in Peru. Welcome, Christian. Rosario Villalobos, who's the director of Policy Monitoring and Evaluation Armand, are you hearing us? I hear you. I Perfect. Guess you. Good. Then uh, uh, just coming from your perspective, having pers pers participated in the AgScan uh, in Cameroon, um, what, what uh, can you share in terms of your impressions of the process so far? Uh, thank you, Riff. I want to share with uh, everybody the experience of Cameroon. But uh, prior to that, I want to thank Avanti and IFAD for the opportunity given to us, but especially I want to, to thank uh, Etel Sivanda, who was the Avanti team leader who helped us to grow in the process. Having said that, I want to tell you that um, we are very, uh, how can I say it? We are very, uh, obviously it's a good uh, tools for us, to, to be in the process of uh, Avanti. Normally the follow-up unit, which is uh, in the Ministry of Agriculture, I'm talking about the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development of Cameroon, the, the process helps us to get more sensitive to results. Result, because we were focused on activities. This was due because we have um, a long time, they were not uh, in Cameroon, a national census on agriculture. And then we were not uh, very aware, not familiar with uh, question like uh, data, or the, despite the fact that there were a lot of data to collect, but we were focused on activities. But right now with the process, when we diagnose, when we make the diagnostic, we were, it seems that we were focused on the result also, and the unit in charge, the unit I, I, I use, which is in charge of the, the process. 
which is in charge of the process in the in Cameroon. The process is very the the, the unit is more about full uh, monitoring but not evaluation. We were not aware about it, and Avanti give us such in a, such focus on initiative, and I'm very glad for that. We start the process. Our orders said to right now the process were by diagnosing, setting up a plan, and then orders or uh, orders setting up a plan on the three on the five pillar, and then right now we can say that. We are more aware, we have set up a, 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 an action plan, which we are waiting for to for funding. Our capacity, we, we recognize in the diagnostic that we need to build our capacity on evaluation, because right now we are doing just um, monitoring. We were just uh, aware about the monitoring. So we need on the five pillar, leadership, monitoring, accountability and partnership, planning and statistics, which is very weak like we have because I said uh, prior, the, it has been long that we have not uh, make a national census for, for, the, for Cameroon. That's what I can say. But if you have uh, any question, I'm still ready to, to answer to you. Yes, uh, thank you for that. It sounds like the... Um... Uh, AXCAN came along at a good time for, for Cameroon as you were starting to anyway think about this whole uh, loop between monitoring and then evaluating and, and incorporating these kind of things into the planning and, and implementation. So uh, it sounds like a positive experience. And I know it's quite, I think it's quite recent, isn't it, uh, when you had the self-assessment? Uh, we have an uh, uh, we have a, a self assessment on uh, on July on June with Etel when we, we make the the the, the, diagnosis, the 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 launching of the workshop. That's why we we, we have the our, we, we ourselves we make an uh, an self assessment with all the all the stakeholders of the process. Ah uh, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, well, thank you for that. Um, I think uh, it would be good to, to carry on uh, with some other part, uh, other members of the panel and then come back to you maybe with one of the uh, questions that comes up from the remote participants, if that's okay. Back to the Peruvian colleagues then. Yes, how, how, what can you say about your experience of the AgScan, uh, especially from this rather long uh, year, year old perspective? Uh, how are things going there and how, is it, uh, how has it been for you? Here from Peru, um, Christian will respond in Spanish first, and I will be translating as, as he goes forward. Thank you. Buenos días, aquí del Perú a todos los panelistas. Eh, nuevamente agradezco, digamos, la invitación a este proceso de intercambio de experiencias en la, digamos, metodología Avanti, que es, eh, nos viene apoyando Geletas y el FIRA, ¿no? a través del Ministerio de Agricultura. First of all, um, Christian wants to say good morning and thank again for the opportunity of sharing our experience and um, with the support from Helvetas and IFAD through applying the, the AXCAN. Particularmente en relación a la pregunta sobre este tema de la experiencia eh, de la implementación del laje SCAN, eh, Nosotros creemos que ha sido oportuna y buena. Dada que esta metodología que se aplicó en el Ministerio de Agricultura para evaluar justamente las capacidades reales en materia de seguimiento y evaluación de política, ¿no? eh, digamos, nos puso como un punto de partida para saber exactamente si es que estábamos preparados justamente en el seguimiento de estos objetivos de desarrollo sostenible. Here in in Peru we we think the methodology was very good and it was a, the perfect timing when it got here. It was applied in the Ministry of Agriculture to self assess our capabilities in monitoring and evaluation and progress of the sector in general and the application of policies 
regarding the sustainable development goals in particular. La aplicación del, de la herramienta GESCAN eh, fue participativa, básicamente en de directivos y especialistas eh, de las dependencias del sector agricultura, eh, digamos que de alguna manera están vinculados con estos objetivos de desarrollo sostenible. Básicamente el punto clave fue eh, su aplicación al contexto particular en tu sector, que es un contexto muy complicado, pero a la vez este, muy rico, digamos, en, en materia pues, de, de información. Obviamente en el marco de la gestión por resultados. The application of the AXCAN was a participatory among executives and specialists from many different areas of the ministry, especially the ones linked to the SDGs. Mm -hmm. The key point of its application was that the AXCAN was adapted to the context of our sector in the framework of results management. AGESCAN ayudó a identificar, por ejemplo, nuestras debilidades y eh, a través de ellas comprometernos a ser partícipes justamente de un plan de mejora basado fundamentalmente en cuatro pilares que se han priorizado ¿no? a través de esta herramienta. Liderazgo, planeamiento y presupuesto, seguimiento y evaluación y estadística. AXCAN help us identify our weakness and commit to being part of an improvement plan based on four pillars. Leadership, planning and budget, monitoring and evaluation, and finally statistics. Quisiera eh, adicionar otros elementos que creo debemos considerar este, entre todos los colegas que han participado de esta iniciativa Avanti en los países que ahorita tiene, digamos, cobertura. Y, en primer lugar, lo voy a hablar despacio para que te permita traducir este correctamente estas ideas claves. En primer lugar, los instrumentos de planificación y de seguimiento y evaluación deben girar en torno de un sistema de información inteligente. A ver si se puede traducir. Eh, eh, Christian wants to mention some additional elements of the, of the experience of the country participating in this process. First, Please go ahead. Right. Uh, the tools, las herramientas. De, se, de planificación y seguimiento y evaluación. Mainly about, uh, within the tools of uh, monitoring, evaluation and planning. Uh -huh. Esas herramientas tienen que estar en torno These tools have to be, a un sistema de información inteligente. They have to be um, within the context of a uh, business intelligence uh -huh. context. Uh -huh. Que sea capaz este sistema de mejorar el proceso de toma de decisiones en el sector agrario. The system has to be able to support the decision making within the agricultural sector. Basado indudablemente en evidencias tangibles y orientado hacia resultados concretos based mainly on uh, evidence and oriented to concrete results. Uh -huh. Sin esta condición de un sistema de información inteligente y completo, without this um, comprehensive, comprehensive system, iniciativas como Avanti no tendrían sostenibilidad en su aplicación. Initiatives such as Avanti wouldn't be sustainable with their application or after their, their implementation. Eh, ejemplo de lo que digo son los instrumentos que actualmente contamos, como la estrategia por resultados. Some of the examples are uh, our strategy, result-based strategy that we are applying currently. Nuestro principal instrumento de seguimiento de evaluación. Que It's tiene, our main instrument of monitoring and evaluation. Que tiene vigencia desde el 2016. And it's, uh, th that has been uh, implemented since 2016. Uh -huh. eh, sin embargo, su implementación todavía no se ha podido consolidar, precisamente por la ausencia de información. But this uh, system hasn't been able to be consolidated 
Basically because uh, the lack of information. O porque la información que recibimos no es oportuna. Or because the information decisión. we have received it's not uh, timely. So it doesn't apply to to decision making. Uh -huh. Sin embargo, creemos que Avanti es una herramienta sumamente importante y oportuna para el fortalecimiento de nuestras capacidades en seguimiento y evaluación. But we think Avanti it's a very good uh, tool because it helps us uh, have the information in a timely manner so we can have better decision making. Eh, en esta línea, en esta línea de poder darle sostenibilidad a Avanti. Eh, regarding the sustainability of Avanti. Estamos eh, implementando desde el mes de noviembre la iniciativa denominada Agro Smart. Eh, since November we will start implementing an initiative called Agro Smart. Que en términos, digamos, tecnológicos es simplemente la implementación de un proyecto data warehouse del sector agricultura. That it's mainly uh, in technological terms uh, data, data warehouse. A data warehouse. In agriculture. In agriculture. No. Que permita contar con una plataforma de información integrada e interoperable. That will have a information platform that's integrated. El que se aplique el concepto de inteligencia de negocios. And the business intelligent para mejorar, concept will be applied. Para mejorar el proceso de toma de decisiones. To improve the decision making process. Del funcionario público y también del productor agrario. From both sides, from public officials and from the agricultural producers. It's it's very encouraging because Peru was the very first ag scan uh, that was conducted, and obviously it's uh, uh, the Peruvian government has uh, uh, been very uh, engaged uh, and and has taken it uh, even further than we would have hoped. So it's uh, it's very encouraging to have that uh, that kind of engagement. Uh, we 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 really hope that we see that in other countries as well. So in a sense, it's great to have this. Uh, pioneering example. But let me uh, uh, ask Armand uh, just to, uh, if you have a quick uh, response to the question that you hopefully see on your screen now. There's been interest from participants who registered beforehand, uh, wondering what's the incentive? Uh, what would you say is a key reason uh, for you to, to take up an ag scan in, in Cameroon, for example, Armand? What I can say uh, for, as the key reason we have, uh, Quite many reasons which make uh, the Ajik scan very interesting for the Cameroon, for the, the, the Cameroon side. The, the Ajik scan make us focus on the quality of indicators first, because we, have, we, we still have this problem of the quality of indicator to know how to assess what uh, is going on. And also, it's a great opportunity for our team to build, uh, cap to, to build capacity, uh, capacity to, to improve their capabilities on, to build their capabilities on issues like evaluation and monitoring. I think that is the, the two main reasons. And this is in, you can find the, 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 the deep interest in the, cap in the, in the methodology set to get because the methodology bring you to do by yourself, but with you, the assistance of the the consultant or the, the the team leader of the of the process. That for us, the, the quality of indicator build us cap capacity to improve capabilities. That are the the main reason we make we motivate uh, our site to implement the Agiscan in our country. That's what I can share right now. Thank you. No, that's uh, very useful, actually. It's good for us to get a, a country-specific uh, picture. Um, uh, here's another question from Rafael Zeivold, who's uh, our uh, co counterpart in IFAD, who's responsible for, for this initiative, uh, whose question is, what are the challenges specific to the agricultural sector as compared to other sectors? Um, 
I know uh, maybe people, most people recognize that the, the ag scans are obviously very sector specific, but do we have particular challenges in the agricultural context that should be taken into account? A specific uh, challenge we have to take in, in concerning Cameroon in the, and to have concrete action when we set the plan, the, 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 the action plan, we have concrete action is on coordination. Coordination. In our country, agriculture involves many stakeholders as in is a huge sector, a huge sector. And we have an, a lot of donors act in agriculture, a lot of act, governmental actors, civil society. There's a lot of people around agriculture. But the coordination of the action is very weak. It's very weak. I think uh, for us, if Ajis Khan can help us in his pillar on coordination for, to, to set some um, concrete action on that issues, that will be very benefit for us to get more uh, determined to on result. That's for us uh, the great challenge. That's what I can say. Let me, uh, before we open it up again to to all the participants around the world. Let me uh, go to our uh, final uh, panelist, uh, Samantha Custard, who's uh, part of the Avanti Advisory Board. And uh, Samantha is also the Director of Policy Analysis at Aid Data, which is a research lab at William & Mary. Uh, welcome, Samantha. So I just wanted to ask you, you know, now we've heard, uh, I hope you've been uh, well enough connected to hear the interventions from uh, from our uh, Ag Scan implementers, as well as from our uh, colleagues in the different ministries in the in the country uh, in Cameroon and Peru, um, mm -hmm. so we have uh, from from them uh, uh, some inputs from a variety of contexts uh, around these Ag Scans in different countries and different regions, and uh, of course we've mentioned that it's all about supporting improved monitoring, reporting, and learning around the SDGs. Um, in terms of global dialogues. Um, you know, um, we know that there's a lot of dialogues going on and, and uh, the question is a little bit uh, uh, connected to this localization issue too. Um, how do you uh, imagine that the, the AgScan experiences for ministries and the Avanti team uh, could be kind of uh, shared more broadly or relevant in, in other arenas? Sure, that's a great question, Riff, and thanks to the previous presenters, very, very interesting and fascinating to hear about your experiences applying this tool in your own context. Um, so, you know, when you look at the broader global discussions around the sustainable development goals, I think, you know, we can all agree that what a big global agenda like that does well is in mobilizing resources, attention, commitments, um, across many countries, different sectors, around a common set of goals, targets, um, about what we want the world to look like. Um, and you know, I think the other contribution of the SDGs has been to develop these indicators, which essentially serve as um, measures or barometers of how are we making progress? And it gives us a common language to discuss these things. But I think that the SDGs, as with any global agenda, um, is kind of currently struggling with four things that I think that the AgScan experience um, can help feed into to help them answer some questions to, to ensure that this global agenda really does add up to more than the sum of its parts on the ground. So the first way I think um, it can do that is through localization. So one of the big conversations right now uh, at the global level is, you know, it's great that this is a global agenda, but what does this look like in the context of specific countries with specific challenges um, that are not monolithic? Um, and so I think that the Ag Scan is a great example of, you know, a tool that is relevant to important parts of the SDGs agenda at the global level. Um, it's a means of exploring um, the connection between the SDGs and the national uh, development strategy, um, sector plans at the country level to essentially make SDGs relevant in this local context. Um, and helps us explore a little bit uh, more specifically, what are the major blockers or pain points to progress in these different SDGs? Um, a second area I think that 
the Ag Scan is helpful in is talking about prioritization. I think one of the great appeals of the SDGs is that it is broad and inclusive. It has 17 different goals. But on the flip side of that, the, the critique of the SDGs is where do countries focus their efforts? And so I think that um, this participatory process of the Ag Scan in helping countries drill down on uh, the most pressing specific felt needs, capacity gaps that they have is a really great example of helping countries prioritize. Um, and it's an opportunity to shrink the change um, that, you know, that change process of how do you translate the SDGs into concrete, concrete steps. It also gives funders and governments a clear unified picture, of, like a short list of the most pressing priorities where they can focus their attention. The third uh, area I think that this Ag Scan can help with is this question of actionability. So, you know, notably the, the SDGs are about goals, it's about vision, it's about aspiration about what we want to see happen, but it doesn't really give us a very clear roadmap in how to get there. And so I think that the Ag Scan process of, you know, talking through these questions of what is our theory of change, um, you know, what are our major capacity gaps, um, how do, where do we want to go and how do we, how do we get there, I think is a helpful way of taking these ideas of the SDGs and making them actionable in practice. Um, and I think that, you know, it's also helpful that there's a very clear opportunity to showcase um, what participatory approaches to defining priorities and defining action look like that I think is more broadly relevant across the SDGs. And then finally, um, uh, you know, I think that the SDGs are helpful in seeing that, you know, when we talk about development, um, we're talking about multifaceted problems that require multifaceted solutions. And I think one of the presenters earlier talked about uh, breaking down the silos. And I think that the fact that agriculture, you know, by nature feeds into so many different facets of the SDGs and requires sectors to work together, um, I think is a great example of, you know, how do you mobilize a multidisciplinary approach to solving a development problem in a, in a bounded way in agriculture. And so hopefully that, that all makes sense. I'm, I'm coming at it from a very global view, but it, it's encouraging to me that the Ag Scan, you know, is not only beneficial to the countries that have participated so far and in agriculture, but um, could be more broadly relevant in many more countries and sectors in the future. Thank you. To bounce off uh, your comments a bit, um, you know, uh, it, it occurs to me that that the uh, we're, we're talking a little bit, and this ke keeps coming up. This whole uh, the challenge about localization and what does it mean at, in a given national context? Uh, this global agenda and tra translating it into into concrete action. I think you've done a an excellent job of giving us uh, some of the, the entry points that that Ag that Ag scans can, can use to to kind of make that link. But my question to you is. Um, how about uh, the the uh, in, in the opposite direction? Uh, I mean, I think one of the, th the things that, that that probably would be of interest uh, at at a more global level is some of these concrete experiences of trying to work with SDGs in these contexts. That I, I think uh, you know the real tangible kind of experiences that uh, may may not be so common for people to to hear about. Uh, uh, what what are your thoughts on that? make sure I understand the question. It's essentially um, how how would it be helpful to the broader global discussions to share some of the experiences and the challenges that countries are facing in implementing the Ag Scans? Exactly, yes. Mm, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a great question. Uh, you know, it's, as you all know, it's easy or relatively easier to come up with a grand <laughs> strategy or grand plan at a global or a national level than it is to execute that in practice. Um, and I think that the the experiences that have been shared today and that you know uh, colleagues that are not on the line have experienced in trying to do this in their own countries, whether it's who who do you need to get in the room to um, to discuss these priorities, how do you build consensus, how do you translate ideas into action, how do you mobilize money, how do you um, get adequate data to work with. I think these are all helpful insights 
that I, I think should feed up to the international level. I think it can be helpful in um, informing uh, donors, uh, so multilateral organizations, bilateral funders, in, in understanding where they can best um, uh, channel technical assistance and funding resources that are going to be helpful to countries. You know, instead of making countries doing do things that they don't need to do or want to do, you can you can direct these resources in a way that's effectively on budget to what you're trying to do with these act scans. And I think that kind of intelligence is helpful. I also think there's a lot of um, discussion right now around data and monitoring for the SDGs. And there's a lot of debate about where to focus attention and efforts and what the real pain points are. And I think actually being able to learn from the experiences of the ag scan countries about, you know, what are the, the most pressing data challenges, what are the constraints, I think that could be a way of prioritizing the focus of people at the international level to do this. I also think that um, there's a tremendous opportunity to not only learn from the difficulties that ag scan countries are facing, but also their successes. And so I think that the Open Government Partnership is a great example of you know, tapping into a broader community of countries that are trying to open up their governments um, to their citizens and really highlighting and learning from each other and saying, oh, you know, how do we, we borrow and replicate what has been tried successfully in other countries? So those are some of the ways that I think, you know, I would like to see lessons learned both from the difficulties, but also the successes in Axcan countries, inspiring other countries, but then also filtering up to the global level. Well, thank you, Samantha. That makes a lot of sense to me, and it reminds me of the, uh, the the one thing we haven't talked about up to now, which is the knowledge component of the Avanti initiative, which is meant to complement the ag scan component. And certainly, these are the kinds of things that we will try to do as as kind of uh, facilitators of of these various processes: is make the linkages, uh, get some of these things uh, into the discourse at different levels, and and explore ways in which uh, all of us who are involved in one way or another can can prioritize and respond to uh, specific elements uh, it's it's you know when you look at the whole package of of sdgs and the pursuit of sdgs and how it's happening in different places it can be overwhelming in its complexity so i think that uh, that your call to to really focus and help to prioritize and and you know get uh, keep keep things tangible as much as possible is is a good one Samantha, thanks a lot. Uh, I, I hope you're staying with us in case uh, other questions come up. We're about to to move into the more open dialogue uh, part of this e-panel discussion. So we will start to take questions from uh, participants uh, who are remotely adding them, and then we'll see uh, who might respond to them. If I understand it, this question is about the AgScan tool itself. Um, what are the what are the challenges in implementing the tool? Uh, perhaps I could go back uh, as we have uh, uh, Kai and Patrick uh, with us who have actually used this tool in a number of different country contexts. I think five country contexts between them. Would uh, uh, one of you like to to step in and, and respond to this question? I mean, Axcan is a is a tool that has been developed or has been der derivated from a an existing and tested and uh, recognized recognized tool that is the capacity scan, the cap scan. So what we did is we took this uh, this tool and we adapted it to the agricultural sector. So this is why it is Axcan. Uh, we modified it. We 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 have a, 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 the procedures. We have different tools. The main tool is a matrix with the five RBM pillars where we go through and 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 it is a set of questions and proposal for answers in order to and uh, know and assess where do the capacities of the ministries where where do we find them uh, the the matrix and the the specific tools we adapted to the country context because uh, every country is in a different situation and um, and we need to make it uh, we tailor make it for for the specific um, case and we 
test, we tested the tool, we, we developed the tool by implementing. So it is a, it's a, it is a way that the different methods are getting improved. Uh, we started with Peru, then uh, Samoa, they could learn from the uh, experience in, in Peru. We got it up then it's in, in Sierra Leone, in Tunisia and so forth. So it is, um, uh, the, the tool is getting better all the time. And uh, when we hear the reactions, even for the first time in Peru, we had a lot of reactions uh, from other ministries and to tell us, yes, we would like to know because we struggle with the same uh, issue. We would like to assess our capacities, but we do not have a tool. Can you please share with us how, the, how to do this and so forth? So we realized that, yes, there is like success stories on this methodology. There is a demand from other ministries. There is also the idea, for instance, in Peru, we discussed that if we want to replicate uh, in regions, so to get it, break it down and go more into the into the regions to have an assessment also on regional level. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think this is a, these are the success stories we have right now. Just uh, I... Uh, I also wanted to thank Nureddin Asara. I didn't mention uh, the person who posted the question, but we have another one uh, from uh, Motsosele Labalo. Where the action plan is not successfully taken off, what strategies have been used to address this? Uh, that's a question that is probably fairly difficult to answer, but uh, I might, I'll hand over to the, to the AgScan implementers in a second. But from my perspective, uh, uh, one must uh, recall that we're, we're in basically the, the it's in some cases, the first weeks and months uh, of, uh, of of following up on the self-assessment. So the action plan process, it takes quite some time, uh, depending on the context, for an action plan to be elaborated. But um, let me just uh, uh, find out if Patrick or Kai has a response to this question. Let me perhaps answer it in a slightly different way. Um, or rather answer a slightly different question because my the two ag scans I took part in are relatively new. One was in April this year and the other was in August. So the we can't, we're, it's too early to say uh, whether the action plan has been, has successfully taken off or not. Uh, so what I can, uh, a question I could answer is what did we do to make it more likely that the action plan would successfully take off. And here the key is uh, ensuring that there is an agreed process for uh, continuing the action planning because really uh, it's a process and not a product. We don't have a, we do have a set of recommendations, but uh, they are uh, inevitably this uh, fairly, uh, I wouldn't say, simplistic but you know they were done fairly quickly so there's a there's a need obviously to um to refine the recommendations and then to make sure they get into a process where the right people uh are tasked to uh to 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 look for ways to implement them and, and that may involve money or not so we did what we could to ensure that there was a process in in both countries um and as far as we know, those processes are still in place. Um, so I, I'm op cautiously optimistic. Yeah, just to your Peruvian colleagues, uh, this question of action planning, uh, uh, we've been impressed with the fact that, that uh, how things have gone in Peru and how you've uh, followed up on the self-assessment. Uh, could you say something about how you see uh, what, are, what the key factors are that have allowed you or, or motivated you to to take this action planning forward in the way that you have. Rosario will help us answering. Okay. Buenos días con todos. Eh, gracias por permitirnos esta intervención. Entre los factores claves que necesitaríamos para implementar eh, este plan de acción. Among the key um, yeah. actions to implementation, um, we could mention. Is the financiamiento. One is, is uh, funding. Um, capacitación constante. Second is permanent uh, capacity strengthening. Um, articulación entre los diferentes linkages, involucrados. linkages and articulation among different instances of the ministry. Um, 
Eh, el, aparte de la articulación sería las, el compromiso de cada dependencia. It's not only uh, para, linking the, the lograr, instances, but it's also achieving the commitment of each area. Uh -huh, to, para lograr eh, en forma general desde la alta dirección hasta todo, todo el ministerio este, lograr achieve, esta implementación. ¿no? To achieve the implementation, you need to commit from other instances, from up uh, in the, the highest level of, of uh, the directorate of the ministry to offic uh, officials down to different areas. So the success is depending mostly on committing and articulating all of the actors within the ministry. Uh -huh. Asimismo, también lograr no solo la integración interna del ministerio, sino con otras dependencias externas también que nos podrían ayudar, en este caso FIDA, este otras eh, comunidades, ¿no? Y continuar con el Betas para que nos puedan ayudar más en tal vez mejorar la herramienta en otros, no mejorarla, sino aplicarla en otras de, nuevamente después de la aplicación de este plan de acción. Um, likewise, uh, success also is linked to how we can articulate and uh, relate to other dependencies, such as IFAD and other actors that can bring in uh, more information or could further assess the process so it can continue implementing in other regions or in other parts. Y de esta manera lograr este el éxito, ¿no? De la implementación de estas acciones que como resultado se tuvo de la de pasar esta herramienta a GESCAM, ¿no? En las en nuestro ministerio. So mainly the the success is within that articulating all of them so we can uh, successfully implement the, the results of the X-Scan. Okay, thank you very much for that. It's uh, great to have that perspective, as they say, of a, of a longer term uh, experience. Um, we are coming towards the end of the of the panel discussion, but perhaps we can take uh, one more uh, question. Uh, this is from Manuk Overkamp. Uh, if I understand it correctly, there is a shared ownership about the action plan by the participants. My question is whether or not in previous ag scans, also the intended beneficiaries of projects have been included. It, no, there are, yeah, there are two parts to that question. I think they're both very interesting. I mean, shared ownership. Um, it's definitely true that the ownership of the action plan rests with the uh, the in-country stakeholders. That there's, there's, there's no in, in no. Uh, respect is the uh, Avanti uh, own, owning the action plan. So the question is who in the country? And that will depend on the context. Could be that there is a, a, a single uh, committee that is going to coordinate the uh, continued action planning and oversee the implementation. That was the case in one of my countries. Uh, in another context, it could be a particular high-level individual who will have responsibility for ensuring things get moving. Um, but clearly, uh, there's uh, a great benefit in the participants in the workshop, who are the ones who actually identified the action, to be involved. Uh, and of course, in many cases, they will be, because they will be m and &E people in the uh, different parts of the institutions that where, where the improvements will will be taking place. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer uh, because it will be different in different cu countries. Now, in the second part of the question, beneficiaries of projects, um, the, the, the Ag Scan is about high-level aspects of monitoring, evaluation, and learning, or RBM. Um, it's not about particular, the way particular projects are monitored and evaluated, but obviously the action uh, is always at the level of projects or services. Um, and so, although uh, certainly in my case, in the case of the countries that I was privileged to to uh, to help, uh, we didn't ha explicitly have identified projects, uh, project beneficiaries, but we did have representatives of civil society um, and from, uh, yeah, from other institutions that were not central but which were instrumental in in development so in an indirect way uh yeah the the beneficiaries uh were included in the axcan process it's difficult to include all of the 
all of the relevant actors in, the, in these uh, kinds of things. They, they require a, a very focused effort and a manageable size, a manageable group size in the first instance, but also uh, it, uh, we all recognize that this kind of action uh, needs to be owned and, and led by the, the governments in, at the national level. And so the question is how you, how you make the, uh, the implementation aspect happen in a way that is a multi-stakeholder kind of, of uh, thing, even if it is being, being uh, driven by a particular stakeholder. Um, uh, perhaps we can take one more question uh, before we, we close the e-panel discussion. How reliable are the results of a self-assessment? Shall the opinions of independent or non-government organizations or individuals be useful to know? It's a little bit related to the previous question. Um, I would invite uh, whoever has an interest of, of all the to, uh, to respond to this. Yes, I can have a first uh, pitch on that. Um, um yeah yes i mean the the, the results of this uh, of this process of the identification of where do we stand the capacities is dependent on the composition of the group so it is not a, a an objective uh, analysis uh, with uh, objective criteria but it is more a process of discussion uh, what we do we we always uh, insist in when they when the participants uh, assess a component or answer a question and they say, yeah, we stand here, or yes, this is the case, that they really provide concrete evidence. You know, so to say, okay, so give us an example. Why do you say, why do you think that uh, we are uh, on that level or another level? So this is our way in order to, to somehow guarantee that it is not just a yeah, I got assessment, but that there is really um, um, background information on that. And this is also included in the process. We do not only evaluate, but we capture the discussions, we capture the the, the project there, the point, the, the, the participants point at the documents that they share. So, so it is a self-assessment, but it is furnished with them, um, with information. In many cases, the uh, assessments are a consensus, but in some cases they're not. Uh, and in some groups, uh, there were actually quite divergent opinions. Um, and, and so we, we captured those differences. Um, and the, and the, particularly in one of the countries uh, that I witnessed, the divergence was, uh, how can I put it subtly, there was a certain degree of of confidence in the ME systems from ministry people, but where, with the people who were implementing projects, um, found that uh, they often had a, a totally different view. They, they they said that the data that was available, say for, for example from the National Statistics Agency, was of no use to them. <laughs> so that is why, in this particular case, uh, the sound level in some of these uh, discussions was extremely high. So that was really good, and we captured those differences. It's not a, a totally straightforward uh, um, process. So um, I think uh, this is what the lesson that we continue to learn and, and, and to refine our learning around is, is you know, we're talking about uh, many different contexts, uh, many different uh, actors within those contexts and, uh, and extremely complex uh, issues that everyone's trying to grapple with. And uh, one of the things that I might uh, mention in, uh, here uh, is that, you know, if you're not involved in these ag scans, you you may think that they're, um, they're something different than what they are, but they're not really involved in looking at, for example, specific uh, SDGs and targets and indicators and how they can be uh, improved. Uh, the, the ag scan self-assessment is not about looking at those kind of nitty-gritty details uh, of, of, of these kind of things, but it is about uh, taking uh, actors at the national level through uh, processes of, of reflection on, on these different dimensions. You, know, you have this leadership dimension, um, evaluation and monitoring event, uh, dimension, accountability and partnerships, planning and budgeting, statistics. So it's a very, very broad range of things that people discuss at these workshops. Uh, and and try to assess their situations with respect to them, both uh, capacities that they have um, to to improve uh, what they're doing, uh, 
uh, or capacities that they have to do what they're doing well, as well as the gaps that they identify, and then to to focus the action planning around uh, both uh, the the issue of how do we uh, build those capacities or what kind of support might we need uh, from elsewhere to help us build these capacities. Uh, but also there, I think Patrick mentioned earlier when he was talking about action plans, there are a number of things that come up that are uh, readily uh, implementable by those actors without outside support. And it's just a, a question of saying, yes, you know, this is these are some of the things that we could do. Perhaps it's a closer uh, collaboration or coordination amongst departments or, or between ministries or other actors. Um, but certainly they can... Uh, uh, a lot of, a number of these things they can take forward without having to to look for resources or or support from outside anyway i i I think uh, we're basically uh, uh, running out of time now, and I want to take the opportunity uh, to thank uh, the various uh, members of our of our e panel you know patrick uh, Spavin and Kai Schrader uh, as ag scan implementers. Uh, Arman Zoa from the the uh, government of cameroon as a as an ag scan participant. Christian Garay Torres and Rosario Villalobos from the um, uh, government of Peru, who've also been involved in uh, ag scans and uh, in their respective uh, situations, as well as uh, Samantha Custer from our advisory board. Thank you to all of you for, for having contributed your thoughts and reflections and expertise. Um, it's been much appreciated by us for sure. And I'm, I'm certain that the, the remote participants have also uh, uh, gained a lot from these discussions. And I finally would like to thank all the people who did join us remotely. Uh, I hope that the experience has been uh, enriching for you and we, we de definitely appreciate uh, your interventions, your questions, your comments. Uh, we will also reflect on on the comments and questions that we did not get a chance to, to take up. Um, but uh, we definitely appreciate your interest and we hope that you will uh, keep track of us as we continue to to go on with further ag scans and engage with others um, in the course of our of the unfolding of the Avanti initiative. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, EFAD for providing this uh, space for us to to have these discussions. Uh, certainly, in the context of of ag scan implementation and and implementation of the broader Avanti initiative, we. We are learning uh, on an ongoing basis, and, and this kind of event and exchange is, is highly valuable for us to, to get outside perspectives that we, we don't uh, always uh, have a chance to, to really get into. So we very much appreciate that, and thank you for your time, and look forward to the next opportunity for a similar exchange. Um, and just before I, I uh, close my microphone, I would ask the, the uh, panelists uh, who've participated with us to, to rejoin uh, the same uh, space in, in five minutes so that we can have a quick debrief on the process. So thanks again to one and all, and uh, we'll see you next time.